Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be, guys. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you're having an awesome day, but get ready because this is part two of our deck building series. In the first part of the deck building series, we demolished and removed the old deck, then we dug the footings, then we framed up the deck, and today we're gonna actually put the skin onto the framing. We're also gonna cover stair options, and more important than any of that, we're going to take you step by step through the process so that you guys can do it on your own at your own job sites. We're also going to be sharing with you the things that we learn as we go, including the mistakes that we make. I might want to do this because I made this extra long so I could... I made it extra short. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody makes mistakes, man. Even Frankie. If we can make the mistakes here, hopefully it'll stop, help you guys from making the same mistakes out there on your own job sites. Oh, and hey, before we get into it, I gotta give a big shout out and a big thank you to Moisture Shield Technology because without their help, this video would not be possible. Please do me a favor and go check them out at MoistureShield.com. I chose this product specifically because it is the only material I discovered that can be built on the ground under the ground and under water permanently. When I learned these things, it blew me away and I wanted to make sure that I brought this to you guys so when you're out working on job sites, you can bring this technology to your customers. It's gonna put you ahead of the game, knowing these facts. So now, what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. Now, if you're just tuning in, make sure you go back to video one because we've already showed you guys how to frame this up, how to do the demolition, excavation, put in your footings and put your posts in place. Today, we're gonna put the skin onto this framework. When you're building your deck, setting the right frame height is critical and here's why. So make sure you're very careful when you're framing your deck that when you set your deck height, it allows you to compensate for the actual width or thickness I should say of the deck planking itself and this type of planking is one inch thick so make sure you take that in consideration when you're framing your deck because you've got to get it exactly right you set your framing too high then your deck planking will uh, become a trip hazard when your door when you open your door right yep so this is our first time ever using moisture shield material and we're gonna attempt to cut it and see how it handles in comparison to wood or other composite materials you're setting the detent at 45 on your cut. Yeah. And then, is this plank upside down or at right no, side up? We're right side up. Well, my neck's got all this flip it. Okay, so we're gonna see how well this saw will cut composite wood. Holy cow. That's clean cut. Dude, that is really clean. Man, that stuff cuts nice. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, this is clean as can be, smooth. That's the first cut we've made. Yeah. I mean, that's... So the old school way, you'd flip them upside down to cut them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you're building a wood deck, here's why you flip it upside down to cut it. You cut your wood, you cut it upside down. You put the, the side you're gonna put up, you put down to cut it. Cut the back side of the wood. It doesn't splinter your wood. Hey, Frankie. Yeah. You gotta use a, uh, when you're using this composite decking, do you have to use a special blade on the saws, do you know? No, no. Whoa, 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 now I contacted the guys at Moisture Shield to find out what is the perfect saw blade for this project, and he said any blade that has anywhere from a 24 to 80 tooth count. Now, to help you guys out, I'm going to list all of the tools I used when building this deck down below this video. Also, make sure you go to MoistureShield.com for any other technical questions or details that you may need to help you complete your own job. Now, let's get back into it. So this deck is gonna be picture framed, meaning that the outside of the deck, the boards will follow the framing of the deck material and the inside field will run differently. And when you go to cut your own material, this moisture shield just handles like a dream. Absolutely was so impressed with how well this cuts. So now you're picture framing this deck in. Yep. So tell me a little bit about that if you don't mind. Well, I guess we uh, face nailed or face screw these with your... Uh, Finishing nails, or trim nails they call them. But I'm gonna start at one end, and I'm gonna work my way right around, so I keep my joints tight. And then to keep my, inch, uh, and I'm doing an inch and a half over. Inch and a half overhang, why is that, Frankie? Our faceboard will go on, and that'll be 
That'll take up three quarters of an inch, but we'll, so when we're finally done, we'll have only like a three, or, three quarters of an inch overhang, which is always good. Okay, so it does hide mistakes and stuff like that if you need to. So what he's talking about is this overhang right here. The picture framing starts out at an inch and a half over, but by the time you put your fascia board on, that shrinks that up. So that is a nice tight cut you made there. How many times does that take you, Frankie? <laughs> Once. <laughs> And you're using Makita's impact, right? Yep. Now you could use a drill. A drill. A drill, a drill but, but that's way better. Yeah, it just, it, they, they just go in easier. You don't have to force it in. Don't so, push too hard. Yeah, so if you guys, watch it, watch it as it goes down and in. Watch it, it'll do the work for you. Okay. That ratchet sound is the impact doing the work for you. And when you've got as much to do as we do. You don't want to be screwing around, screwing around and just get one. Drill slip off your screw and then you're, you're just, just get one. Mess. Just get one. Get one. Like seriously that thing is a lifesaver. I mean if if there was anything I would say that you gotta get to do this deck, would, would you would say be an impact, yep. That would be the one tool. Yep to get to make your life easier like night and day easier so much faster i just want to keep my screws parallel you know i mean okay but they're jogging all over you're going to countersink those right yeah. yeah and after you're done countersinking them we're going to take a heat gun to that and you shouldn't be able to tell that even existed and if you're wondering what happened right. to frankie's finger well that's another story altogether. and that's why we call him one finger frankie now now this is, now let's get something straight. This is a hidden fastener system, but you still have some that you can't hide. But now this right here. You won't see it when, supposedly when we're done. When we're done, we've got a super sneaky, just the sneakiest thing. You guys gotta subscribe. You gotta stay tuned for that because we won't, we won't let you know how we do it till the very end. Okay, we use a heat gun and we just melt it a little bit and it just goes away. Word of the day. All right, we're going to eliminate screw holes from composite wood. I'm going to show you how. It's called the pinch and pull method. When you have a screw hole, you pinch and you push as much material back down into the hole as possible. Then hammer it over and you'll see that you get a little bit of discoloration from that. And then you use a heat gun, not a torch. And what the heat gun does is that helps to blend all the colors back together again. So if you use a torch to try to do the same thing, this is what's going to happen. The heat gun does the trick. And here's the uh, here's the here's the screws right there. That's what you need, guys screenshot that crap and take that with you to the store that is exactly what you need a t10 head eight by two and a half inch trim nail so when you go down to menards to get that screw that i was talking about then you tell them the dirt monkey sent you they probably won't even know who i am maybe like one fanboy that's in the stock room that they don't let out in public might know who i am I noticed you scored that a few times, Frankie. Why? I, mean, I guess I'm just used to using wood. That's how I do my wood cuts. It cuts a lot like wood, so I'm I'm cutting it like wood. Okay. Just. So you've got to 45 all of your corners on a composite deck because the exposed ends don't have the same pattern as the as wood. So like wood has the same wood pattern. This composite does not. You can see that it's there. And then let me see the, the top side. See that pattern is different. So you've got a 45 year ends on a composite yeah. deck. Might want to do this because I made this extra long so I could, I made it extra short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Uh, yeah. Everybody makes mistakes, man. 
Even Frankie. Uh -huh. <laughs> now because Frankie is picture framing this deck in. He's got to actually create nailers, right Frankie? Yep. Okay, can you tell me exactly what you mean by that? Well, because our deck boards are going to be running with the house, I need something for the deck board to stop, stop on. But if I knew in ahead of time, I'd have built my end beam like this. I'd have put my first one in, then I'd have ran my spacers. So my first, that would have been my, that would have been my beam out here. Instead, of, unless you wanted to make a third, a three plate, well, that's a waste of money, you know. Because then that way, this is this is how it would sit underneath. It would sit just like this underneath the. Okay, so the reason you're saying if you knew ahead of time, because you thought you didn't know we were going to be picture framing this in. Correct. Until we got the final plans back, and you had already had it framed in because you're just like that. Right. Yep. So it's not a, not a worry. So you've got the whole outside double framed in. Double plated, yep. Double plated, and now basically you're triple plating it. Basically, yep. I'm just giving a, enough uh, space here for the uh, the deck board to sit on. Well, we just... shouldn't say triple plating it because this is, let's look at the difference between what we mean by a spacer. So this is the spacer. Yep. It doesn't go all the way down. It's just something so when the plank comes this way, it can catch on top of it. Yeah, it can sit on I got a small plank right here. So when our board's coming in, see, otherwise it would just be sitting out in the open. You now can't we got let it float. Now it's got something to. Now it's got something to rest on. So it's important to make sure that you guys never let it float. If you let this float, this because this could eventually become a squishy part. So this board goes all the way up. And it's got something to rest on. You don't tip, typically, Frankie, the decks you make, just the way you do it, you don't normally picture frame them. No, no, no. Nope. Basically, wood and I mean, I've never done this before, but I like the system. I, I just make it, I think it looks nice. Yep. <laughs> okay, so one, a word of caution the picture framing system looks nice, but it takes longer, doesn't it, Frankie? Yep, yeah, because you gotta make sure your, your framing is you got your, your 290s, 245, because it all shows up in the end. To create the nailer boards, Frankie uses just about any scrap wood. Here he's cutting down two by eights just to get enough meat to nail the uh, deck planking to. That is really wet wood, isn't it? Yeah, you can give Makita a plus on that one. Why is that? Well, it's wet and it went right through it. I mean, you can see the wetness in it. I mean, it's, this board is soaked. It's heavy. So, I mean, it gives them a plus, but you know. You didn't think it would do it? Well, I thought it would probably quit on me once. Okay, one of the lessons we learned doing this little different next time was you see these lag bolts, they have to be countersunk to get the board to fit flush on the face. Because if they stick out, then the board sticks out. Of course. Now when we just build a regular deck, we don't have to worry about that, but we're facing all of this, so that's the difference. And also you can see where he's got to miter all the corners. You can see how he's got that corner mitered. You can't have a butt end in there. And anything that gets face screwed like this will have the pinch and pull heat gun method done over the screw holes to make those disappear. All right, so we're using what's called a hidden fastener system and all of the deck boards are actually held in place by clips. And you can see right here that the clip goes in, connects to the board, and the clip actually holds the board in place. Nothing gets face screwed. Well, here we face screwed it. You can see the difference between face screwing and a clip side by each. And this face screw will be, um, this, this gets melted over so that disappears, but the rest of the board does not get face screwed. Okay, so this is Frankie's trick to get his marks just right, because you can tell he's got pretty tight miter cuts. Okay, so you set your board in place, and I see you got a screw. Is this your trick, Frankie? Well, then I mark my board, do the same at the other end so you know where, where you're going to be. And I just use that because I'm putting on the deck board by myself. 
Okay, so, so that's just... somebody holding it. But, so but then I, that, I know where to measure it though. See, now I'll mark this. Okay. Boom. We'll do the same thing on the other side. I know where my peaks are going to be. We see how I have my mark here. And that's what I measure. Okay, so that's how you measure across. Yeah. Okay. And that's how you get those miter t cuts so tight. This is neat. I run a few of these just to make sure all my sides are in, and then I uh, go back and put the rest of them in. Now one thing about Frankie, he's always preferred to work alone. That way he's got no one to yell at when there's a mistake, which you're going to see coming up next. But with this hidden fastener system, it's much easier to install with two people. But one of the things that I really like about Moisture Shield's hidden fastener system is it gives the final product a really clean look. That gap is an even gap, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So all, he just did not have it over far enough. Frankie's not happy. Here's a Frankie butt joint, and here's a not Frankie butt joint. This is what's ticking him off. He's a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff. So instead of just letting that, that go, what are you gonna do, Frankie? I'm gonna take that end, I'm gonna take that end board off, that picture frame end board. Yep. And uh, pound, it, pound them tight. They actually do move too, that's kind of cool. What do you mean they move? Well, they're, they're, they're able to slide because slide of the back and forth. Because of the clamps. The clip system allows clips, you to right, tighten them yeah, up. Yeah, they're able to. I mean, they, they only have a little way they can move, but you still get a little play in them. So it works out pretty well sometimes, especially for stuff like that. Should we call it an Elliot butt joint? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Elliot, boy, you can get a lot of butt joints. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Elliot butt joint. Elliot butt joint, Frankie butt joint. <laughs> I told him yesterday, I was telling him, I said, hey, uh, did Stan happen to mention that the doors fell apart? <laughs> we had to go buy new bolts and do it all over again. So because the end's there, you're gonna be able to see that. We don't wanna see the, the green wood compared to the rest of the deck. We put on a fascia board on the end. Frankie's showing us how he marks that out and then he cuts it. So you're gonna cut it to fit, right Frankie? Yeah. Which is a little different. So then this is a little different technique. Some, some people actually just use the entire fascia board just as it is raw. Now I think this is gonna, the way we're doing it's gonna leave a better, more finished look, but you can do it either way. You know what I'm talking about Frankie when I say raw? Yeah, I don't like that look. No. It just looks like a hack job. Alright, we I want to show you guys the stairs. So the stair stringers actually come pre-cut, right Frankie? Yep. Yep. You can buy them in our wherever, yep. Yep, so you can buy them pre-cut or you can cut them yourself. It's not that big of a deal. It's up to you. Here's something to look at. You want to make sure that they're level all the way across. You don't want your stairs kitty wampus. So yep or skipper, you can make them yourself or you can just buy them pre-made. Depends on what you want to do. And if you buy them, buy them pre-made. That's seven and a quarter. I'll come over here. What? They ain't always seven and a quarter. <laughs> oh, they're not always seven and a quarter. No, it all depends on who cut them. Look at these. See, seven inches. Seven. That's seven on the dot. Yeah. I mean, you get some of these. I mean, it all depends on who's running the cut. That's yep. what I mean. If you cut, if you if you make your own, cut your first one and use that as a as a jig. As a jig for all your other ones. Then you eliminate all of that variance. Yep. I mean, when it boils right down to it, Frankie, I've seen some of these guys build decks and they're cutting corners and they're doing just sloppy, crappy work and I don't know, it drives me nuts, man. But the homeowners, a lot of homeowners don't see that. They don't, because they, 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 don't, they, they know. don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on and so... They're getting ripped off in the long run. I mean, they are. Well, there was like the, a job we looked at, I looked at today where the deck was built 17 years ago and she was swimming in her pool and she looked up and she's like, they started the railing on the outside of the stairs and then they shifted it to the inside of the stairs at the really? top to make room. And of course you wouldn't notice it unless you just leisurely laying back and all of a sudden you catch it. And now the homeowner, every time she looks at those stairs, she's bugged. She's gotta see it. She's gotta see it and it bugs her. Yeah, cause she noticed it now, so now it's every time she's gonna notice it. Yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's a big deal. It is, and it sucks. 
Yep. It's just like every flaw in my house that when I built this house, every flaw that I built into this house drives me nuts now. Oh, you bet. Drives me insanely nuts. It's the only thing I look at. All the other good, cool stuff doesn't make a difference because I'm like, if I would have only gotten that one seam tighter, and you know who it bugs even more than me? My wife. But I just tell her, well, you can fix it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would work. That would work. It, it doesn't work. She still complains about it. <laughs> so now when you're building steps, there's a number of different ways you can do it. We opted. What do we call this, Frankie, with this end board on it, you know? We frankied it. <laughs> but no. What do you call it when you dovetail that end on it like that? They call it. They still call it a picture frame. So this is this is a picture framed stair. Okay. Built, built off from a stair stringer. Well, when you do your picture frame, yeah, you got to box in your your corners, so you got something for this, so it doesn't tilt. Oh, good point. See, I, I still I still drilled and screwed my ends in for support, but still, it still will have the tendency to want to tilt in. So what would happen if uh, we didn't do it when we picture frame this, this overhang, if you went to step on it, would flop down. So he put the board here to secure this piece and then went through this into this piece of wood right here. Then that slides into place and then we're done with that stair unit. Yep. All right, guys, now I know this has been a long video and I want to say thank you for sticking with me on this one. I didn't want to leave any details out. I wanted to cover absolutely everything so that when you went out onto a job site, you had the information you needed to have an absolutely successful project. And that also meant I included all of the mistakes and errors we made during the process. Hopefully those parts helped you out. Let me know if you guys like seeing when I screw things up like that. Also, a couple things I learned about this moisture shield is it has this stuff called Cool Deck Technology and that absorbs 35% less heat than typical composite material. And the reason these little details are important is when you guys go out onto a job site, you can offer this material to your customer and it'll se separate you from everybody else that doesn't know about these things. Another important thing to keep in your memory bank when you're trying to sell a job is that moisture shield can be buried underground, it can be installed directly on the ground, and it can even go underwater permanently with no ill effects. And guys, that's huge. When you can give those details to your customer, it just makes you look like an expert. Now, one question for you guys. Do you wanna see how we installed the railing on this job? Because if you do, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make that video for you guys. I want nothing but for the absolute best for each and every one of you guys. God bless, go get them, and I hope your deck building project is an absolute phenomenal success.